football team at Holmes High School. He attended the University of Kentucky for three years, returning home in 1951 to help with the operation of the family farm. While at UK, he met his future wife, Beth, and they were married in 1951. Between that time and 1962, they became the parents of five children. In 1964, he was elected judge executive of Boone County, and in 1967, he received his degree from Thomas More College, majoring in history. He served as judge from 1964 to 1981, and he was returned to office in 1984, and served until 1992, when Governor Brereton Jones appointed him commissioner of the Department of Local Government. He served in that post for four years. In 1996, he returned to the family farm. He and Beth are the proud grandparents of 10 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Bruce, thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And thank all of you for attending. It's a wonderful audience we have out here, and especially meaningful to me is that there are people in the audience who actually lived in this house. Let me see, see the hands. There we go. Now more than that. There. Okay. That lived in Winfield Cottage before it met its tragic fate. Uh, so we will proceed. But I want to start out with the lines of uh, poetry by John James Pyatt, written in 1877. He was a poet, and the one line that is so fitting uh, as a preamble to this message is, he says, in our quick white west, the ruthless plow spares not dear landmarks to displace. And this is a dear landmark that has been displaced, not by the plow, but today's plow, the bulldozer, the construction plow. We're going to move now with, fortunately, we have the fine slide presentation worked up for you by Steve Conrad. And <clears throat> as it says, the Ohio River was the superhighway in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Just today, as we see the impact of the interstate system, this was the interstate system in the early 1800s and late 1870s. The Ohio River, beginning at where the Monongahela and the Allegheny meet, right somewhere there at the Pittsburgh, the Allegheny and Monongahela meet to form this, as the French call it, La Belle Riviera, beautiful river. Uh, that was their name for it, but we took the Shawnee name, who lived heavily, of course, in this whole area, as the Ohio, which to them meant the same thing, the beautiful river. It was because transportation over the mountains was so difficult here from Virginia, our people lived all the way to the east and crossing into this new land of Kentucky was so difficult, except their only passage they could figure was through the Cumberland Gap and up through here to central Kentucky. The quickest way, of course, the easiest way was to Pittsburgh and down the Ohio. So all the Ohio Valley became the settlement for the new west, which was Kentucky. As they came down first to Maysville, and then on, of course we know Big Bone was recognized at least in 1739 by the Frenchman Yalangel, but then the traffic started coming down, first by flatboats, as steamboats had not yet been developed. Boone County has over almost 40 miles, or maybe more, of Ohio River. Uh, shoreline, more than any other county in Kentucky. We seldom give thought to that. The lower most shoreline on the Ohio River is for in Boone County, in within Kentucky. And the first towns were settled along the Ohio. And we go up here with the not marked now there, Taylorsport, Constance. You come on down to what used to be Towsie Town, here where Second Creek and Taylor Creek meet. 
than Petersburg, which was the largest town in Boone County for many, many years. Laid out by Reverend Taylor, uh, Tanner, and then on down, and here we come to the magical area for which we will to speak, the East Bend. And it was called the East Bend because the river takes a dramatic eastern turn for four and a half miles here. Following the East Bend to the county line of Big Bone Creek. All right. Now, we have our locale here. This is the area that was the land of Eden to the first people that came here. Rich river bottoms, river traffic, creeks, the Gunpowder Creek, Riddles Run Creek, Landing Creek, Big Bone Creek, all of them offering opportunities for inland progress, but they settled first along this area here. Next slide, I believe. Now, the Humphrey Marshall, well, if ever there was an interesting man in Kentucky, it was Humphrey Marshall. He was a revolutionary soldier, a, a compatriot of George Washington, was on his staff, and uh, not only was he a, a did well in the military, but after the war was over, he received a grant of 4,000 acres, which was typical grants given to persons of rank, the officer class, and for service, if they gave a sufficient service. He received a grant of 4,000 acres. Well, that really wasn't much to Humphrey Marshall because he was even made another move, he became the surveyor for the county of Kentucky for the state of Virginia. And a surveyor, as you know, sometimes in those days took liberties with what they surveyed. Uh, they didn't always, uh, well, the surveys didn't always match the, what was the technicalities. Regardless, he received the grant of the part of the county, especially the valuable land along the river. Let's move on. Now, let's place, <clears throat> place him in perspective to the Pye family. Uh, Humphrey Marshall sold this, his, the Pye's landing to Thomas Corneal. Thomas Corneal then sold the land to Robert Pyatt, who you see here. Now, Robert Pyatt, the, <coughs> pardon me, the, he was the son of Daniel Pyatt right up there. Daniel Pyatt was one of the four sons of John Pyatt and Francis Wyckoff who fought in the Revolution. He had three other brothers who fought with him in the Revolution. Daniel Pyatt, then his son, <coughs> pardon me, Robert Pyatt, purchased this land in East Bend Bottoms from Humphrey Marshall who had just previously sold it, kind of a big land deal. Thomas Corneal was also a big dealer. The Corneal House in Covington, El, uh, Elmwood Manor uh, in Ludlow, the Elmwood Place in Ludlow, those were part of his developments. All right, John Pyatt, who was uh, the grandfather, <coughs> Robert Pyatt's grandfather, left France because of religious persecution, he was a Huguenot, and uh, that was a member of the Reformed Church, inspired by John Calvin. The John Calvinist group uh, were strong in the United States, especially leaving <coughs> their religious persecution in, in, in Europe. Now, move ahead. And there, Daniel Pyatt, the sports son of John and Francis Pyatt was the father of Robert Pyatt. Robert Pyatt is the man who came to Boone County, purchased the land from Carneal, who had gotten it from Humphrey Marshall, who were mighty good at swapping land back and forth. Uh, they did a great job of developing, they were the first developers, I guess you'd say, or the speculators. <coughs> now, Robert Pyatt built the, the first house there, this is the house, Pyatt's Landing. It became known as Winfield Cottage because of the subsequent owners to the land. 
this property. Uh, Robert Pye started out with 200 acres that he had purchased from Carmel through the big Humphrey Marshall 4,000 acre tract. And he started with this pipe, the landing really developed by Robert Pyatt with 200 acres and a bunch of slaves. He acquired additional land as the opportunity presented itself. So we'll move on now from his house to the location of the area here. And we have, all right, let's get the pointer going. Now, does that thing still work? I'm not supposed to put this in anybody's eyes, so I've got to be careful. All right. So, are we getting it? There. Where'd it go? Where'd that marker go? There. There it is. See that? Okay, I've got it down there. That is Winfield Cottage right there. This is from the 83 Atlas. That's Winfield Cottage, which is now became called Winfield Cottage after it was sold by Pyatt. Now, at this time, it was just the Pyatt's landing. Notice the landings were very important. We have currently landing down here and Pyatt's landing there. And look at the names, <coughs> which are still in the county. The, the round name comes up. The Hodges, ah, we got some Hodges here this evening. The Kirtley name almost passed out of existence, but what a strong name in the past of the county. Rouse, look at the Rouse. We still got the Rouse. And the Rouse, and the Stevens, the Hodges, the Bodies, the Kirtley, of course. And there's John Calvin McConnell, who was my great, great grandfather. And now this is 1883. Keep in mind, at the, in, at the period we're still talking about is up until 1840 when Robert Pyatt still owned all this land. And, uh, it was after he had married uh, Anne Jones from Bryan Station. Uh, when he came into Kentucky, they uh, came down the river, but they used Commerce developed to Bryan Station, which is right outside of Lexington. And I guess he was looking for a mate, but he married a young girl from Bryan Station. And then purchased this and developed the, the, wind, the, the cottage, which became known as Winfield Cottage, the home. All right, now, there's the house. Now, initially, the house was not this large. Through the years, Robert Pyatt added these other rooms. It started out just with this basic structure. There, the central structure. It had underneath this dining room, you have a full basement, and the kitchen, there's the cellar. There's where the cooking was done, and the cooking was done then uh, in, uh, on the first floor. But keep in mind, they had nine slave families working with them on the farm, and they would uh, get the food upstairs to the dining room through, uh, what do they call those? Dumb waiter? Dumb waiter. Dumb waiter. Dumb waiter. Okay, yeah, it was, a, it was a smart move to have a dumb waiter in those days. <laughs> uh, which was a, a, a smarter move, they didn't even have to pay them. Uh, okay, so there was the opening through the floor that, where they would bring the food up from the cooking in the kitchen. Now keep in mind, this house has six chimneys on it. Every room, of course, has a fireplace uh, because that's the only way you could heat the places in those days. Uh, but that's the central house there, just that. Now, with the passage of time and prosperity for Robert Pyatt, he added more to the house. He added this room here, which became a...